All right, let's go on to the consent agenda. Don, Ms. Quintana, City Clerk. Mayor, item uh, 8E, Resolution 2020-17 has been removed by staff from the consent agenda. It will be brought back due to an error in one of the attachments. So 8A is Resolution 2020-13, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city acting by and through its water utility enterprise and the Northern Colorado Water Conservancy District for location of a camera to monitor the St. Brain Creek. 8B is Resolution 2020-14, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving an intergovernmental agreement between Boulder County and the City of Longmont for the Environmental Sustainability Matching Grant Program. 8C is Resolution 2020-15, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving an intergovernmental agreement between Boulder County, City of Boulder, City of Longmont, City and County of Bloomfield, Town of Erie, City of Lafayette, City of Louisville, Town of Superior, Town of Nederland, Town of Lyons, regarding the Boulder Area Trails Mobile Application Project. And 8D is Resolution 2020-16, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city and State of Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, Division of Oil and Public Safety for compliance with the Elevator and Escalator Certification Act. All right, Dr. Waters. I move uh, the consent agenda. Second. All right, it's been moved. The consent agenda has been moved by Councilman Waters and seconded by Councilman Peck. Any deb debate, dialogue, questions? All right, let's vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. The con That's enough. Yes, we're done. No, so th th that, that passes unanimously. All right, let's move on to ordinances on second reading and public hearings on any matter. First is 9A, Ordinance 2020-08, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to execute a lease extension of real property known as 1140 Boston Avenue to Longmont Wind Air Company. Are there any questions from Council? Does staff has a report, have a report, anything like that? All right, seeing none, let's go ahead and open this for a public hearing on Ordinance 2020-08. Would anyone in the public like to speak on this matter? All right, seeing no one, let's go ahead and close the public hearing. Can I have a motion? All right, I, uh, Councilor Peck. I move uh, 02, 0 2020 I'll second that. It's been moved by Councilor Peck, seconded by myself. Let's vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. All right, passes unanimously. All right, uh, no items have been removed from the consent agenda. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to general business. 11A, DSC and creation station space needs. Mayor Bagley, members of council, Joni Marsh, assistant city manager. So the item before you this evening is a request for council to give direction regarding the creation station, which is the little building attached to the development services center. It used to be a print, the print shop for the city. Um, community Services has been using that at the direction of Council. Council actually voted and made a motion four years ago. Um, at this time, we're really out of space at the Development Services Center and are looking for um, places to put staff, um, which don't exist. So we have spoken with Nancy at the library, Karen Roney, as well as um, Jeff Friesner at REC, and taken a look at what that programming looked like and that whether or not they would be able to relinquish that space and they have determined that would be reasonable for them to do so. So we're just asking tonight for council to give some formal direction if we could move forward with moving into the creation station with Development Services Center employees. So there's a motion on the floor to allow staff to go ahead to change the use and occupy the ex morgue of the city. Uh, so let's go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, that uh, motion carries and passes unanimously. Let's move on to 11B, Pepler Neighborhood Concept Plan Amendment. It's continued over from 11420. I believe staff has an update on the discussions pertaining to that little handwritten questionable phrase. So give us an update. Uh, correct, and I'm gonna ask Don to, to make his way up closer to me so he can help me fill in the blanks. Um, so obviously there was a plat note uh, that existed um, regarding the development of this property. Uh, there were some concept plans. Um, I think it was ambiguous in terms of what was actually contemplated in there in terms of the plant note, and there was a number of questions. Um, we had, um, per council's direction, we had entered into conversations with the developer of that site trying to find a solution based on some of the um, ideas that the council threw out during the previous conversation and some ideas that I 
and worked out with Don and we had real time in, in there and um, and um, you know we were we were moving through that very slowly um, the conversations were difficult in terms of what we were trying to accomplish um, to, to be completely candid on Friday of last week we received a letter from legal counsel representing uh, the individual and we were um, actually prepared to come in tonight uh, to postpone this item to a date certain of March 31st so we could have the time to do the the a, a fair amount of legal research to, uh, to really evaluate our position um, prior to this meeting we had a meeting with the applicants and what we were trying to really work on um, was trying to fit in four deed restricted uh, single bedroom affordable housing units and um, and that was something we talked about and then the question comes in well what is a civic purpose I think what I was trying to really work off of is that the council has set a goal of affordable housing being important to us and and the civic purpose was of providing affordable housing and evaluating that concept we were getting into a number of sitback issues there were issues related to how the parking was going to be structured and it just started becoming more pro problematic um, literally a few minutes before this council meeting we agreed to um, with the developer to essentially take the square footage that would have been associated with those one bedroom single family units um, at a rate of three dollars and seventy five cents a square foot which is consistent with other things that I'm working on uh, related to the affordable housing fund they would then just pay us an equivalent amount for those units um, which amounts to twenty one thousand dollars that would then be placed in the affordable housing fund to be used for the purposes established um, which is to provide uh, affordable housing to our community um, and so um, from my perspective and in working with uh, Teresa in this conversation we feel that it really the civic purpose that we're satisfying is that we're actually putting additional funding into the affordable housing fund in order to pr um, help us um, provide affordable housing to our community granted it's not it's got to be accumulated with other funds um, but that's where we are today council can consider that option um, based on where we are in the conversations um, my opinion is is um, based on the amount of legal research um, in the ambiguity and in, in in the plat note and what we have to work through we think that is a equitable way to resolve this issue yes I move ordinance 2020 a with the condition that the twenty one thousand dollar contribution to the affordable housing fund be included as a condition to 2020 a I'll second that all right any additional uh, comments or questions from council members all right seeing no further debate let's go ahead and vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed say nay nay all right the, the uh, motion passes six to one or I'm sorry five to one with Councilmember Martin uh, absent which I should have announced that, that you got that right Don yeah, all it. right and then with uh, uh, Dr. Waters dissenting all right let's move on to 2020 or uh, item 11 C uh, legislative bills recommended for City Council positions Hello, Mayor and Council, Sandy Cedar, Assistant City Manager, and I have four bills for your consideration today. Um, they are, I just handed them out to you, but they have also been posted in the designated spot and on the web. So the first bill is House Bill 20, 1192, concerning the use of money in the Petroleum Cleanup and Redevelopment Fund for development of fuel cell electric vehicle projects. Obviously this, so this bill basically would um, say that we could pull any kinds of money that comes out of the public safety funds for oil and gas cleanups to be able to be used for this kind of innovative work on electric vehicle projects. Um, since this really supports the council's sustainability goals, staff recommends that the city council support 20, House Bill 20, 1192. Senate Bill 2124, concerning adding the public school facility construction guidelines as a requirement to consult with the local electric utility. Um, our electric utility, LPC, thinks this is a good idea to get in at the beginning of these kinds of construction projects, and so therefore uh, city staff recommends that city council support Senate Bill 124. Senate Bill 151, concerning the regulation of the Regional Transportation District. This one's pretty tough because it really requires a whole lot of new things of, of RTD, which of course I think we think that needs to happen, some additional auditing and some other things. 
um, just as far as transparency of the operations of RTD. But at the same time, the way that the bill is written is pretty bureaucratic and has a whole lot of reporting requirements that might actually not get you there. Um, so several of the organizations, transportation organizations, are planning to oppose unless it's amended. I think the concept makes sense, but we are unsure that the method makes sense. So we would like to just monitor this for a little while. Keep going. I was okay. just going to mention something on that one. Okay. Go ahead. Um, and then the last one, Senate Bill 2153, concerning the creation of an enterprise uh, that is exempt from the requirements of Section 20, Article 10 of the State Constitution to administer a fee-based water resource financing program. Um, this one would basically pull different fees and general funds to create a revolving loan fund, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when we are the ones that are planning for our own future and our own water utilities. We would encourage everybody else to do the same. Um, and so staff recommends that City Council opposes Senate Bill 2153. Um, I, my, so this came up at the uh, mayors and, or the mayors and commissioners committee, the S Senate Bill 20-151. Um, all it's doing is adding four new positions to the RTD board. It's going from 15 to 19, which the what? I oppose. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so, so do I. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, I know that there was some talk at the Metro Mayors or the, the Mayors and Commissioners MCC. Committee or the MCC um, because I know that there were allies who were championing the bill and we didn't want to hurt their feelings and people were kind of hesitant and but at the end of the day, I personally think that what needs to happen, and again, I think they need to redistrict, like just like we do at a state and national level, RTD, the RTD board, keep 15, but adding more, subtracting more, unless they redistrict to make it proportionate, there's no solution. So going from 15 you know, disproportionate seats to 19 is just going from bad to worse. And so I, I actually move that we oppose Senate Bill 20 151. Councilmember Peck? I agree with the mayor. So that's um, a second. You, that's called a second. I'll call that a second. All right. It's been moved and seconded by myself and Councilmember Peck. So, uh, NADA, the Northern Area Transportation Authority, also opposes this because of the uh, addi addition of new board members. But um, uh, the part, the point here in this statement that um, reporting audits, I also want to say that NADA is getting a very deep audit of RTD. Some of these things we're already going to do. We don't need a bill. So that's my input. Mayor Bagby, yeah. members of council, certainly from RTD, that's what we've heard, is that all of the stipulations of the bill are already things that are required of them. And so the only real change is the board member change. Right. So, so I mean, I don't know why we were, I mean, anyway, I know why we're hesitant, but I still think we should express concern. Okay. So Absolutely. there's a motion and a second. So the motion is to go ahead and uh, direct staff to oppose Senate Bill 20-151. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> all right. Cool. So that motion passes unanimously with Councilmember Martin absent. Um, uh, we still have three others, however. Do we have a motion? Uh, Councilmember Peck? I move the slate of bills minus uh, SB 2151, period. Right. Follow right. the staff recommendation? As, as, recommended by staff. as recommended by staff. I'll second that for you. All right, it's been moved by Councilmember Peck, seconded by the mayor. Uh, Let's, any, any further question, dialogue, or debate? Seeing no further discussion or debate, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes unanimously with Councilmember uh, Martin absent. I do have one other question. Where have we, did we take a position on Senate Bill 93? Hang on one second. That, that's Mike Foote's uh, arbitration bill. Uh, arbitration. I just want back up from council before I do something. Council has not taken a position on 93. Right. So I guess the, uh, uh, I don't know why. So the Metro Mayor's Caucus, which I usually don't go to because we can talk about that in private if you'd like. But uh, anyway, uh, the Boulder County mayors are have asked that I, uh, so the way the Metro Mayor's Caucus works is by consensus. And if five or less, if, if less than five mayors don't oppose it, 
then there's a press release that basically says the Metro Mayor's Caucus uh, is, uh, is against it, or, or for it or against it. So in this particular case, for some reason, the Metro Mayor's Caucus is coming out asking for a consensus vote um, uh, opposing Senate Bill 93, which basically just sets some arbitration requirements, which I really don't understand why this rises to the importance of, of uh, I don't get it, but I do know it's really important to, to uh, the other mayors in Boulder County and have asked that I uh, join them in opposing uh, their opposition, and I was gonna do that. Um, what is the arbitration for? Yeah. So the, the, uh, it has to do with uh, again, sex assault victims. I think so. Let me okay, do you want to read, can you pull it and just let us know? Mayor Bagby, I attended the Colorado Municipal League Muni Caucus today. There's no discussion about this bill. Right. It, it, it just, it, like I said, it's strange why this would be an issue of debate. Because so, this is the Consumer and Employee Dispute Resolution Fairness Act concerning protections related to mandatory agreement provisions in and connected with enacting a Consumer and Employee Dispute Resolution Fairness Act. Close, but keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Not you, me. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Um, the bill enacts the Consumer an Employee Dispute Resolution Fairness Act for certain consumer and employment arbitrations. The act prohibits the waiver of standards for and challenges the evident partiality prior to a claim being filed. It, it is mediation is what it looks like. It's so, required so mediation. That's right. So basically, it's basically saying you can challenge um, an arbiter based on bias and whatnot. Again, it's not, it's a big nothing the, burger, yes. but mm -hmm. it's important to somebody and it's really important to the other mayors in Boulder County and they're asking, and it's important to Mike Foote, and they're asking that I join them just to make it so that the Metro Mayor's Caucus does not have a consensus to oppose this bill. Is anyone opposed? Dr. Waters? Is Mike Foote sponsoring this bill? Yes, it's yes. his bill. So he's asking the mayors <laughs> to oppose the bill? No, no, Metro Mayor's Caucus came out to oppose it, uh -huh. and the Boulder County mayors reached out and said, hey, Mayor Bagley, we need a fifth vote with this so the metro mayors don't have a consensus so there's no position okay. right. it just goes away so, so the council could support the bill for this example is or not or not even do anything and just tell me it's okay to add my name to the list which i could do but you could do. I, I we haven't taken a position on it and i don't know a whole lot about it and and mayor bagley in reading this and and you all may remember that at the legislative dinner Senator Foote did discuss this bill with you just briefly um, around the idea that it provides the right of the party to challenge the arbitrator, right? Because oftentimes arbitration is binding and that's that. And this gives another opportunity, I think, for people to work out dispute resolution. Was his intention. So if we support what the, our mayor is asking, uh, it would simply allow the bill to go forward and be heard without the Metro mayor mayors uh, expressing Opinion. their opposition. Correct. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. So uh, they just they, the the mayors simply don't want the Metro Mayor's Caucus to oppose the bill. So the city of Longmont does not have to support the bill. No, we're not. Uh, we, this this is not. This is just anyone have a problem? You're just checking. If it. I oppose it. No. Okay. No, 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 no. Anyone? No. All right. 